Google Cozy Group. How lovely. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day at Cam Jam. Um, so, I need my notes. I'm going to talk to you about how to change um, social perceptions and society as a whole, hopefully, through small little projects with your Raspberry Pi, which I think is a powerful tool for social change in a good way. So my project, my art installation was about pollution, um, but I'm going to go delve into what made me do the project. We basically live stream data uh, into DMX lighting to um, show the pollution levels in Chelmsford. So, pollution, yuck. Here's me, a picture of me by a child. Um, <laughs> I'm really good at art, as you can tell. No, it wasn't my drawing. Um, so, I did this project with a school and a set of professionals. Um, I'd call myself a professional artist, but I used help because if you want to do anything, you need to collaborate and help. Um, you need to gather help from other people. Um, but where I come from is I was always good at art as a child. I was always drawing away, and I was always trying to get um, you know compliments about my drawing, about my artwork, until I got to sort of degree level. And then I realised actually this is a really amazing tool that can change society and how we think, and it is doing it right now, not necessarily in a positive way though, which leads me on to my next slide. Oh, shopping centre. So. The art installation that I'm doing is in a uh, um, shopping centre in the middle of Chelmsford, which <coughs> is where most people spend their weekends, not at Cam Jam, as we can evidently see. <laughs> I mean, there is a good crowd out there, but maybe not here. Well, it sounds like it, Yeah, good. So, everywhere we go, we come across these images of what we should look like, of what we should consume, and of what we should believe in. And this is the modern day art. So when you think of art, you might be thinking of galleries, National Gallery, Portrait Gallery. Forget that, that's part of the art scene, but also there's this whole world, this whole culture that revolves around images, photography, models, and wherever you go, you'll come across pictures like this. Or even pictures like this. This is an advert. It's not um, indecent. This is an advert. It's put up on um, buses and things like that. And this is art. This is visual culture as we know it. Um, and really, what I'm trying to do with my project, and what I think more people should try and do, is change this because this isn't very healthy for a society to go around thinking, okay, so I need to buy <coughs> things from a certain brand company to be happy, because we look at Victoria and David Beckham here, and we think, okay, so I need to have that body, have that lifestyle, have that money. A lot of people in our society will believe in these things to uh, have a fulfilled life, although it's a, it's a lie, I'll just let you know that now. So maybe you'll come across the next, the great. More pictures of David Beckham. This is what you should do. And if you buy this type of underwear, I think you will achieve it. That's what they're telling you, but it's not true. So you buy all this stuff at the weekend, and then, yeah, it doesn't really change anything. You're no longer as happy as you wanted to be, and you just need to buy more stuff. And it's just a vicious cycle, and it's called consumerism and a capitalist society. But we can change it, and that's one of the main reasons I put my art installation into a shopping centre, because I think it's around 100,000 people visit the shopping centre per day. So maybe a lot of those people are repeated because they're from the same city. But if I can affect 100,000 people, even a tiny bit, even for three seconds, five seconds, get them to some, think about something that isn't about oh, what should I buy, what do I need to make my life fulfilled if I can get them to think about maybe a social problem 
then we can change the world. So back to me as a kid being good at art, all those people that were behind oop, images like that, they were the same as me. They were good at art, they went to uni, they studied visual communication, maybe they became a photographer, maybe they're an art director. They're exactly the same as me, they just chose a different path of following society rather than questioning actually what is it that we're all buying into here and is it really good for society. So here's my wonderful team. I can't oh, take... <laughs> I'm behind the camera. Um, I can't take credit for the project in its entirety. I just helped it happen, a catalyst, a trigger. Um, there were more children in this involved. And the brief I set them was to look at nature and to try and create artwork that celebrated nature. Um, but we also tackled the problem of air pollution. So here are some of the students. That is <coughs> a leaf made out of plastic bags weaved together, so it's recycling. Uh, this is Victoria Morris on the left. She's another artist who helped with the project. There was also Ed Bai, who is an engineer into electronics. There's also Andy here. Um, and Dave Bauer, who did all of the coding on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so it was a massive team effort. Uh, we made models. So something that also annoys me about life, as well as the capitalist stuff and all those pictures, is the fact that in schools we aren't taught how things work in reality. That might seem like quite a large, harsh generalisation, but for example, um, so you studied art, I studied art for maybe 15 years, if I consider from year seven to university, and I didn't ever pitch an idea to a professional. So in this project, I got people, local members of the county council, Chelsea City Council, um, I brought the engineer along, and a variety of different professionals and said, look kids, this is what it's like in the real world, you've got to tell your ideas to a group of people and make them believe in you and like you. And luckily their kids are cute and they're nice, so the professionals feel great about saying, yes, we love your idea. So it's actually a bit easier for children, I think, to pitch, but it definitely helps um, learning how to not be scared about talking to people and expressing your ideas. Um, so yeah, instead of copying Picasso pictures, they had to talk to people, which scared them a little bit, but I think it was good for them. This is Ella. So there were three installations. One's completed, two are uh, going to be completed. Only one uses um, the Raspberry Pi because of funding. Um, but Ella is the mastermind of the installation that uses the Raspberry Pi. So she's obsessed with stars. She really likes stars. So from the beginning, she was like, oh, I want to make like big stars of light on the floor somehow with lights. And um, she just really liked the shape. So we're like, OK, so how can we build maybe other ideas into that? So we thought about using recycled plastic bottles. So this is the actual space where the artwork will go. It's not up yet. It's going to go up next Friday. So it's a great reason to visit Chancellor City Centre next weekend. And this is our scale model. So they're not the right colour, but those leaf oblong shapes are going to be filled in, or they are filled in, with um, green plastic bottles, which we had to collect, clean, strip. It's really dirty work. And then we had to like heat press them, so we got like a massive iron and squashed them, melted them, dried them off, stapled them together, um, and made really big leaf. That's me. I had to work hard to get green plastic bottles. 
and that's Ed, the engineer. Um, so this is the shape of one of the leaves. It, he's about six foot two, I think, so they're very big. But of course, the space is massive, so they sort of um, get smaller. That's the finished leaf. And these are the lights. I should probably look at my notes now. So yeah, we use 12 DMX lights. Um, which are basically normally used in theatres to create different colours through shining them through each other, I think. That's how they work. And we coded them together using a Raspberry Pi. Um, and I'm not the most tech-minded person, but I'm just going to try my best and Andy can fill in where he thinks I've missed the points. So, um, there are four air um, sort of sensors, quality control things in Chelsea City Centre, and it's European law that every city has um, these sensors. Is that the right word to use sensor? It basically reads the level of pollution in the city constantly, and the data um, is live and it's open to the public, and it has to be open to the public. That's part of the European law, so it's one of the benefits of being part of the EU. Um, so what are we actually measuring? We're measuring these nitrogen oxides, oxides. Um, and there are three sort of different types that they measure. Um, basically they're the baddies, but they're not good for us. And it's quite good that there are four sensors because each leaf um, is going to be, or is, wired up to one sensor, I think. So this is a little map of Chelmsford. So you can see number B, letter B, is in the middle of the countryside, whereas A, C and D are sort of in much more busy locations. So there's a lot higher pollution <coughs> there. Um, and it's quite amazing actually that what a difference it makes. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi. And do you have anything to say about how we use the Raspberry Pi? Well, I don't, it's like I say at the end, I think we'll know what the Raspberry Pi is. Yeah. I can explain a lot more about tech okay. and how we did it. We're nearly at the end. Yeah. So basically we use the Raspberry Pi and Andy, you're going to the technicality of that. Um, but at the beginning I spoke about changing the world. So hopefully my big leaves, or our big leaves, are going to actually impact um, people as they walk past. They're going to think about what what are they, what are they doing there, and why are they there. And we're going to have a big banner saying, you know, about the project. And it'll get people thinking more about pollution and their lifestyle. And you can see that Top Shop's on the left there, which was the first picture I showed you of the wonderful model in her beautiful clothes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to open up a conversation with society about why we are doing what we're doing and also that there are bigger issues. I generally think that most people who use Raspberry Pis are probably quite aware of all these things already. Um, but we are as a unit, a society, and we need to look after each other. And I think the more that people with the know-how of tech, the more they collaborate with artists, um, collaboration is key. I mean, we have such a big team working on this project. Um, if you collaborate with people, you can actually have a project that will hopefully change a time thing, even if it's a three-second split thing. I've definitely changed the kids' lives. Um, but hopefully the artwork will make people think a bit more and if there were more things like that going on, if more people were using their Raspberry Pi to make people think more about social issues, hopefully we'd have a better society to live in. And yeah, it sounds like a really big statement, but um, I'm sure that it's a collective thing. So anyway, I could go out right now and decide to make a hairdressing business and take a lovely picture of a model looking beautifully wonderful hair. 
that's adding to a bigger picture, but by doing this, I'm adding to a bigger picture as well that's combating things like that. Things like this. So my question is, what do you want to change? And how are you going to do it? Go and meet people and start a project. Find some funding. Okay. How, how much time have we got? Um, I think you've got about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so Vicky said um, we want to do this art project and she wants to do some tech to get some Raja Pies involved. Um, so what we did, we met up, we had a number of meetings, brainstorming meetings, and we came up with a number of ideas of how the community could interact with tech. We looked at a few things like where we could have, uh, you could go to a place and maybe you could text somewhere and you could text them and you'd go to a server and then would come back with some sort of response. Um, and then interacting into that, so maybe it would be a stream and the stream would be polluted and there'd be shopping trolley in it and then it could interact, come back. Um, so we looked at a, a number of things and eventually we, we decided to look at the shopping centre it was kind of the safest bit. We had ideas of putting raspberry pies up on poles and, and trying to tie them up and people could maybe log on and use it as a, a web server and an access point, something like that. But obviously people like probably talk, chuck. Talking lamppost projects yeah. is a really interesting project to look up, isn't it? And that inspired that idea. Um, but we thought that's probably not too safe. And so we, what we've done, we've, we've come to this shopping one. If you, you go back to yeah, yeah. So they're the DMX lights, and we've had fun with near pixels, so we all like lights. And yeah. Um, if I explain how it actually relates in a scientific to artistic crossover, um, what happens is those light, those lights are shining down like the sun shines down, and we're going to take the pollution data and we're going to say, well, okay, how polluted is it today? And we're going to say between certain levels, there'll be different colours, and over the day they'll change. So the first level could be, say, white, white is pure, sunlight is pure, and then maybe blue. Blue, when we look at the sky, there's a bit of scattering, we have a nice blue sky on a nice day, a nice summer's day. And then as we go, they can be orange, yellow, and red. Red's obviously danger. But from a scientific point of view, red is more scattering. So red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. So there's more scattering because the sunlight is coming through a lot more oxygen and nitrogen, and it's scattering, and that's kind of where we went. So within the day, it would change between the various colour levels, and as you can see, they're quite they're quite bright, and they're going to shine through. We thought about maybe having different intensities, but in the day, then with the sunlight, it's on the east side, but it's still quite bright. So we need them as, as bright as we can, and we change the colours. What we're actually doing, there's um, a website, and by law they have to actually show. So that website there, um, we can actually scrape that. And we did some beautiful super Python, and that worked, but the problem was this website, they batch up the data and they update it every six hours. So the lights would change every six hours. So that wouldn't really work. Um, but Chelmsford Council are really involved and they're quite supportive of what Vicky's doing. And they like it, so they're actually putting some streams to try and get a live feed. So the data will change at the most 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes. If we have a look, can that be um, we have the wind blowing from the west to the east generally. So B is out in the middle of nowhere, and that's basically our control. So the minimum amount of pollution, which is just out in the countryside, will be measured at B. And C, D and A, they're a lot closer to South to Chelmsford, and they'll have a lot more pollution. So they'll change more. Um, and in terms of the actual lights and the leaves, when you saw that girl, if you put that girl who like the stars, what she's actually doing, she's holding her phone here, shining a light down, and they're the stars. So she's got her phone there, she's shining through the stars here, and on the bottom there's a light. So she's actually working out the maths 
of yeah. from there to there. What we didn't want to do was have them so low people could chuck stuff up because they're made out of bottles which have been heat pressed together and they might break or fall on someone's head. So it had to be a certain height. Yeah. But if they were too high, then the light would shine through it and there would be this massive star and there's a number of stars and they'd all overlap. And so you had to get somewhere in between where it's safe, but also you'd see the stars on the floor. So she's actually got a couple of stars you can see on the white paper and they're not, they're not too close and they're not too big. So there was kind of an overlap. And what Ed did, he came up with a model, if you want to find his model, where we actually did it to scale. And then we have his scale model. So he used a couple of, well, a couple of leaves, which he's just cut out, and some LEDs. And he's made a little wooden one, a model. So yeah. what we'll actually be doing is those sort of lollipop sticks that the LEDs are on, they're going to be dropped down as well. So it, we worked out that it's three metre di distance between the leaf and the lights, but the leaves will be cascaded on different levels, but we just have to make sure we have that three metre distance to make the stars the correct size. So the light and the layout of the leaves isn't correct on this model. No. Um, so that's, that's the, um, the, where we're getting the data from. So we're going to get the data from the government sites and then we're going to change using DMX, we'll change the lights. We'll have a Raspberry Pi put up there and it will use wireless into um, the shopping centre, local wireless, but we'll also have a backup because we're, we're, yeah. we're not too certain that it will be a continuous connection. Yeah. Um, so we'll have a backup just in case the high channel shopping centre doesn't actually work on the wireless. Um, I think that's everything on the tech side. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, when you put that uh, leaf together, it looked as though you were constructing it from the outside in. How problematic was that for you? Um, I didn't, I've never really made one before, so <laughs> I had no idea how to do it. And, um, but constructing it was only problematic because of the amount of labour that it took to um, heat press all the bottles because mm. we had about over a thousand bottles to do mm. um, and we had to take all the caps off, cut all the tops off, cut all the ends off, take the label off. We didn't clean them. <laughs> we probably proved a lot of carcinogenic <laughs> fumes because we collected them from a recycling centre at the end because we just and, couldn't and get another. And you said that um, you heat press them, mm. so obviously you're expending, not to be detrimental about this, but you're expending energy Yeah. You know, to true. get it that way. Have you any idea how much energy you expended to do that in, in view that your installation is you know, about pollution. Well, we're using lights as well, but also not using solar panels. Mm. But I think that the positive outweigh the benefits, hopefully, if we get the message out there, roughly. Um, when we were heat pressing, we heat pressed like, um, at first we were just doing one at a time, which is extremely dangerous, but then I worked out that if you just like stick in 20, or really push it down, leave them for two, like a minute, and then they'd all be pressed. So we worked out sort of quicker ways to get the job done. <coughs> but um, yeah, it, I definitely understand your point. But it's better than the previous project I did, which used um, Perspex that was probably shipped from India and brand new. And I don't know how on earth they make coloured Perspex, but it was pretty stinky, horrible, but it's lovely stuff. Mm. Using this was much more like collecting like bag ends and cleaning them and stitching them together <laughs> rather than cutting them into a nice fresh sheet of paper. And how long will it be up for? Until the Christmas decorations go up, unless maybe they'll <laughs> let it stay up longer than me. So if, if you do, So if you do want to 
come on the scene. Um, it'll be up to the back third week of November, or we can come to the chapter of Raspberry Jam, which chaps at South End League are organising. And that's on the 1st of November, and we'll be in the same shopping centre, we're just the other side. So you can take a little walk, and maybe if Vicky comes back, she can take you on a tour, or maybe do a little talk about it. Is that the Ideas Festival? The Ideas Festival. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to mention a big thank you to the Ideas Hub and Ideas Festival, the only, um, for because I built the whole thing there, and I was building for probably like a month. Um, and also thanks to everyone at the Raspberry Pi Foundation and you guys at South End Raspberry Pi. South End Raspberry Pi. Yeah. South End Raspberry Jam. Second rose jam. <laughs> okay. okay. That's it. One, one more question. Yes. So, so how exactly will this look when it's been mounted? I don't know. These idea. are going to be above the shopper's heads, are they? Yeah. So they'll be, yeah, they'll be um, up, suspended. Suspended. Right. And hopefully, I think it will look most effective, sort of um, at dusk or dawn. Right. because of the level of light, like obviously the darker it is, the more prominent they'll become because it isn't really lit at night, so it's quite a dark area. Right. So you're going to have these beautiful projections of green leaves on the floor with stars changing colour. Hopefully it'll look amazing, but we never know until we put it up, which is part of the joy. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah.